In this video, we're going to look at why survey data are so important when quantifying by XPS. These are two samples, both of which have oxygen, carbon and aluminium, and the peak intensities would suggest that we have different proportions of oxygen and aluminium in these samples. However, to properly understand the quantification tables that are generated from data such as these, we also need to consider these background structures and the way these peaks are formed to make sure that we're making the correct interpretation of the intensities when presented as atomic concentrations. To illustrate these points, we can first create quantification tables for these data. I'll also change the display mode so we offset these data and I'll use a 50% offset in terms of the display tile so we see these two spectra stacked and I'll also just switch to arbitrary units and using the element library if we say find peaks you can see that it identifies the oxygen 1s, the carbon 1s, two aluminium peaks there's potentially an OJ peak between them and we have OJ peaks here for oxygen and carbon so let's now say create and this has placed regions on these data so let's bring up the quantification parameters dialog window so that we can make adjustments if necessary so I'm going to step through and just looking at both of these spectra at the same time I'm just making adjustments to the regions so that I get appropriate regions for each one of these three peaks and now that I'm happy the regions are correct I've got these both selected so I'm going to propagate the regions and the annotation so I now have regions and annotation on both of these spectra let's just say clear elements so that we're looking at the oxygen carbon and aluminium and the annotation table is a quantification table that is gathered from these regions so we can see that in one case we have oxygen and aluminium that appear to be in an equal proportion and in the other case we have a slightly different ratio of oxygen to aluminium so the question is can we rely on these atomic concentrations to give us an indication of chemistry or is there some other explanation for two samples that are essentially the same in a chemical sense but for some other reason we're getting different ratios of peaks from the same materials the answer to this question is in the surface sensitive nature of XPS. If we have two samples producing two spectra that have a background difference then there is the potential for the samples to be different only in the sense that there's an overlayer that is covering the material of interest. So if we have a thick overlayer then the inelastic scattering of electrons that are coming from the substrate through the overlayer attenuates the signal from the photoemission peaks so we see a smaller proportion of photoemission peaks and a larger proportion of background signal and shapes within the background compared to a thinner layer where the inelastic scattering through a thin layer is less significant than when you have a thick layer and so you see more in the way of zero loss peaks, in other words the photo emission peaks that we typically use for our, our quantification by XPS. So what happens to an XPS spectrum when you have a thin overlayer? Well the, the characteristics that we see here in this survey spectrum is fairly typical of a bulk material. We have aluminium, we have the oxygen, we have a very small amount of carbon so we're assuming that the overlayer is carbon and that the material that we're interested in represents this aluminium and oxygen layer. The higher the kinetic energy, the greater the escape depth. So these aluminium peaks are coming from material that is deeper into the surface than this carbon OJ peak down here. 
and similarly there is a difference in the sampling depth for the oxygen 1s and the oxygen OJ. So the fact that we see a small peak for the carbon 1s and also a small peak in the right proportion for the carbon OJ suggests that we do indeed have a thin carbon layer that is at the surface. Now if we contrast this with a sample where we've got a thick overlayer, so the material again of interest is the aluminium and the oxygen, then we see that we've got a, a well-formed carbon S peak and we have a well-formed carbon OJ peak. So these both together suggest that we have an overlayer that's mostly carbon and the oxygen 1s compared to the oxygen OJ where there are no peaks now showing at all. So these have been completely attenuated by the overlayer of carbon and we just see a small amount of oxygen and that's because the oxygen 1s is at a higher kinetic energy and therefore can escape from the surface whereas the lower kinetic energy OJ has completely been attenuated and we can see the aluminium is present once again because they're at a higher kinetic energy and therefore these can escape. Put together you can see there's quite a, a distinct difference between these data and when you look at the survey spectra you can see that from these two samples that it is indeed the oxygen OJ and the oxygen 1S that are taking on different forms depending on the material that's being measured. So we believe that this represents evidence that we have some kind of in-depth distribution of the material of interest that is producing these data that we see. Presented with a pair of quantification tables where we have differing amounts of aluminium and oxygen, we'd like to try and understand a little better in a quantitative sense how these spectra relate to the idea that we have an overlayer of different thickness. And one way of doing this is to perform a difference calculation. And this was performed using the calculator property page, this difference button here. And it has been applied to the two spectra and they represent this black trace and this green trace. And the two calculated spectra are the blue and the red. And the blue one represents what we will interpret as a spectrum that has got a significant overlayer thickness. And the red one is the spectrum that has a thin film on the surface and their substrates are both identical, this is the assumption anyway, as aluminium oxide. So if we go back to these data, you can see that the file that I've got here is actually a linear least squares result file. And if I now display these in a different experiment frame and overlay, we can now see that where we have an equal amount of oxygen and aluminium, the spectrum that we interpret as deriving from a thick film of carbon on top of the aluminium oxide is predominant while the spectrum from a thin film is a smaller component to produce this overall spectrum. Now if I step down, you can see this is the example where we have more oxygen than aluminium. And in this case, this situation is reversed, that the thin film spectrum has a dominant contribution to the spectrum and there is a spectrum from a thick film overlay. So by separating the spectra using the difference method into component spectra, we can then interpret these original spectra and see how to interpret the shapes that arise in the background to each of these spectra.